Spoken, the Hills podcast, paying tribute to the reality show that aired on MTV from 2006 to 2010. We are two Southern sisters re-watching the Hills in 2016 and chatting about it weekly for your entertainment. My name is Susan, and I'm a 30-something photographer who hates most reality shows but loves the Hills. I have been re-watching the show for a few months. My name is Jem. I'm a professional in my 30s who hasn't seen the show since it originally aired, so I'm really looking forward to reliving the magic again 10 years later. We watched the first few seasons of the show in real time when we were younger versions of ourselves, and we are so excited to revisit every episode from our new points of view. This is our first episode that we have recorded since our first episode dropped. We had kind of gotten everything in the can before episode one and rolled it out slowly, so it's been a while. Susan, how are you? I'm doing great tonight. How are you? I'm fabulous. Wanted to clarify one thing that you guys can find the show and watch along with us on MTV.com. Every single episode is on that site. And also there are some DVDs floating around the world that are pretty inexpensive on Amazon. For our friends north of the border in Canada, you can see a marathon every Saturday and Sunday the rest of July. So be sure to tune in and check your local national listings. And thank you so much to everybody who's been listening. We have really loved reading all the feedback and the comments everyone's making and everyone who's interacting with us on Twitter and all the other social medias. It's been so fun to see how excited people are about the show. So thank you so much. We wanted to do a quick shout out to our wonderful people who have reviewed us on iTunes. If you possibly have a few moments open in your day where you could rate or review us on iTunes, that really helps helps other people find us and helps our um, rating go up on the iTunes charts. And we wanted to give a few shout outs to the reviews we've gotten so far. Thank you to everyone who's also rated us, but the reviews are really exciting and we love getting this feedback. So um, the first one is five stars from F Yeah Podcasts. And they said, so glad someone is doing this. I will watch along with you. Can't wait to hear your reactions to the party Miss Q by Heidi. Ew. Our next review is from Raquel Henson. And she said, great job, five stars. I loved the hills. Can't wait to reminisce along with you ladies. Keep it up. Thank you so much, Raquel. And also, if you like the show Gossip Girl, she is actually doing the Loose Lips Sink Ships podcast. So definitely check that out. They're currently talking about um, ships on TV and um, Blair and Chuck on Gossip Girl. So if you like that, definitely check it out. And then our next review is from Baguette de Sorcier. Hilarious. I love the rapport between the two hosts. I've never even seen The Hills, but I feel like you can listen to this easily without having seen the show. I just tune in for the banter and snark. Well, thanks. We definitely suggest you watch The Hills because it's an awesome show, but thank you for tuning in and listening to us anyway. By the way, it is storming where we are tonight, so if you hear thunder in the background, we really apologize. To be perfectly open and honest with you, it is currently Wednesday. Wednesday evening, and since this podcast drops on Friday, <laughs> we have to record it right now. So if you hear thunder, sorry. It's our dramatic sound effects. We totally planned it out. Oh, absolutely. Okay, today we are talking about episode four of season one, Lauren and Jason take two. Susan, since you're the resident Laguna Beach expert and watched it recently, will you do the listeners and me a big favor by kind of recapping what happened with Lauren and Jason in the past? Absolutely. Well, Jim, the Jason and Lauren story started in season two of Laguna Beach. Jason became a main cast member that year. He actually apparently was at boarding school or something for a few years before, so he wasn't in the first season of Laguna Beach, but he was in the second, and he dated Jessica one of the other cast members and they had a super dramatic relationship in which basically he was cheating on her all the time and he always acted like he didn't actually want to be with her and it was like really really dramatic it was probably one of the most dramatic storylines on Laguna Beach they broke up and the whole shocker came when all of a sudden Lauren or Elsie as she was known on the show started dating Jason and it was like the big thing that everyone was like wow we never thought they would get along this is so shocking and then they had a fat 
fashion show near the end of the season. And at that fashion show, caught on camera, Jason kisses Jessica and Lauren sees it. It was pretty awful. Like, I felt really bad for her. And I remember just being shocked because, you know, that's the kind of stuff where you think of a reality show as definitely being scripted. And you could tell, like, that was a real moment. It wasn't scripted. And it was just really sad. But Lauren was absolutely awesome because she immediately said, don't talk to me. I don't want to talk to you. I'm not going to put up with this. And she, like, shut him down in the most awesome way. And it was so empowering. And I really loved that she was like, no. You just cheated on me by kissing this ex-girlfriend. And there was a whole big mess. Everybody should really go back and watch this scene and what happened. Because it was a really great episode of a reality TV show. So after that, she went and saw him before she moved to L.A. like a month later. After they had broken up. And he's basically like, I'm so sorry. I messed up. He was very contrite. And she's like, yeah, well, you did. You ruined it. And that was that. However, I guess I can go ahead and say this. Since, you know, we already know by the end of the episode they're back together is that they actually got back together two weeks before The Hills started filming. So all of this stuff is actually not real. You have just crushed my entire outlook on life. And I know we're not supposed to talk about what's real and what's not real, but they were actually back together before The Hills even started filming. I read something t- earlier today, actually, that said they had they were going to try to keep Jason out of it, and it just became too complicated. So they're like, no, we'll bring him back in. So I guess they talked him into being in it after all. Really? Yes. That- News to me. I just read that somewhere. Breaking news from 2006. Breaking news! Okay, so let's get into this episode. We first start out at the Hillside Villas with Lauren and Heidi. And the doorbell rings, and there's a guy with flowers on the doorstep. A tree. They are the hugest, ugliest flowers ever. (laughs) I mean, they're ugly, am I right? Yes, it looks like a sympathy arrangement. (laughs) There's, like, branches sticking out of it. It was just weird. Of course, it's from Jason, and the card says, I miss you. This comes after Lauren asks, how do you cure hiccups? And Heidi tells her her remedy, which is drink water upside down and put a pencil in your mouth, and then the flowers arrive. There's just all kinds of mayhem happening at Hillside Villas. As you can see, I, like, cut that out of my notes because I'm like, that is so ridiculous. It was funny because when she was reading off the card, she's like, I miss you, and Heidi's like, but you don't miss him in this weird voice and she said do you miss him and Lauren just looks in silence and won't answer probably because she wasn't actually missing him she's like no because I'm actually dating him (laughs) right they're back together (laughs) we're at the Teen Vogue offices and Lauren is telling Whitney about their relationship between her and Jason she said Jason didn't put in enough effort and by not putting enough effort into it Lauren do you mean cheating on you exactly so we're at Bolt House and we meet a new employee whose name is Brett. Okay, Brent and Brett. Can you be more creative with your names, please? And by the way, did you notice what Brett is? What is he, Susan? Guest list manager, Jim. (laughs) Best job title ever. That's a great job title. And we also get the first appearance of Elodie, who will become quite the character in the series. And I can see from the look on your face, Jim, that you have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm drawing a complete blank. I don't know what you're talking about. I can't wait to find out. Did you notice that part, Susan, where the office manager comes up to talk to Heidi and she doesn't, Heidi doesn't have something ready for her and the office manager grits her teeth and pretends to be like friendly and fun, but get her point across too. And she says, girly, I really need those now. And I wish I could go back in time and tell her to just come out and say it. I can't believe you didn't get this done. I need you to have this to me within the next 15 minutes because saying, girly, I really need those now in a business setting never worked for anybody ever just saying and did you notice how Heidi was like I can't even like she was so shocked that she's being asked to do this work so we get to the hillside villa's apartment and Lauren gets another answering machine message from Jason who wants to catch up on old times yes I am using air quotes that was the worst line I've ever heard in my life I was definitely rolling my eyes and then we transitioned to Lauren getting ready for a date so we're like okay well it worked 
so you know me and you know I absolutely love the scene with her putting on her makeup and getting ready. I was so happy and could have watched this for half an hour. Obviously, not obviously because our listeners don't know this, but I am obsessed with eye makeup. It is my favorite thing in the whole world. If you were friends with me on Pinterest, you would see that I have an entire Pinterest board of just eye makeup and it is my ultimate obsession. Speaking of makeup, shout out to our listener, Gabby, who's an awesome makeup artist. She has been listening to our episodes. You'll probably hear her as a guest host in a future episode and she will make you laugh a lot. I loved watching Lauren put on her eye makeup and of course her headband, her giant headband. And her pearls and I little liked, black dress. I like to call this look a woman scorned, colon, cold as ice. That is what I title her outfit. But now that you told me she and Jason were already back together, it kind of ruins the drama of this whole scene for me. Sorry. I apologize <laughs> for ruining all of your hopes and dreams. You're oh. not sorry. And I thought that Jason was so uncomfortable during the scene, but now it makes sense because everything she was saying to him when they go to dinner, she means it. It happened. He feels miserable about it. It happened. Even though they've already gotten to the point where they put it behind them, it's still real feelings that they're talking about from a real thing that happened. Absolutely. And I liked how he didn't come pick her up. She met him there. So she put a little bit of that distance. And um, it was it was awkward, though. Whether they were acting or they really felt that way because they were together, I don't know. And then Jason resorted to the whole puppy dog face, talking about a fresh start. And then Jason resorts to the whole puppy dog face when he's discussing them having a fresh start. And it's just the most tried and true expression a boy can give a 19-year-old girl to be sure that he's totally forgiven for all the terrible things he's done. You and I have never seen that look on any boy's face ever, and <laughs> no, ne- neither has any other woman in America. Oh, well, Canada. Hey, Canada. Hey, Australia. Thanks to all our Australian listeners. We yeah, love it. We love you guys. I like how Lauren is very cold and firm in this scene, and she's yep. just like calm and cool, and he's, but it's so funny. Jason's like, I still care about you, and Lauren's like, I still like you, but I can't be with you. And Jason is all tongue-tied. Like, I don't even know what I was thinking. Please, can we start fresh? And Lauren looks so doubtful. So you're right. This scene is a little less of an impact when you know they are together. But we'll just pretend they're not. Then we go to Bolt House, and they're having a meeting. Hold on, Jim. I don't know now if his name's Brent or Brett. (laughs) There's so many guys' names that start with B at this company. I can't even. Exactly. Kidding. I do know it's Brent. And Brent says they're going to have a party in Vegas and Heidi's face lights up. For a hot minute. Lights up. For a hot minute. Let me let me ask you something, Jim. If you're working a party in Vegas at the Palms for the weekend, would you be excited because you were going to get to have fun and drink and party or would you know that it was going to be a nightmare of having to work hard? I would choose the latter, Susan. I'll take the latter for $500. <laughs> so Brent says, well, Heidi can't go because she isn't 21 and her face falls. I really liked your Brent Bolt House impression there. That it impressed me. Thanks. I think I could do a pretty good uh, Brent Bolt House impression. You could probably take that act on the road. I mean, I probably could because everyone knows who he is. The masses are clamoring for Brent Bolt House impressions right now. Everybody knows who he is. So Jason shows up with flowers at Teen Vogue. More flowers. You want to grab lunch? Do you think the MTV like producers paid for those flowers? Not those. <laughs> he picked those at the side of the road. Pretty much. They're the, from the divider of the closest highway. So then we have a super awkward moment when Lauren goes to find out if she gets a lunch break and leaves Jason and Whitney alone together. And it is so awkward. That is the most horrifying scene of the entire season so far. But it was also hilarious because I, I always think Jason is always like more of an awkward person. I know you didn't watch Laguna Beach in years and years, but I always felt like on Laguna Beach, he was always so awkward and like never seemed comfortable on camera. And so far in this episode, he has been the same way. He's just very shifty on camera. He, he wants to be anywhere else but there. Well, let's be honest. If you were a guy who was constantly cheating on his girlfriend. Which I have been so many times, so I know exactly how he's feeling. 
(laughs) (laughs) And there's cameras following you around, so you know they're going to see it. Wouldn't you feel awkward? Yeah, I'd be pretty nervous about getting busted for all of those things and all the other things that if I'm Wall, I'm probably doing during that time. Mm. No spoilers. So they go to an outdoor cafe to eat lunch, and when Jason gets his food, he says, gnarly. This is not going to be the last time he'll use this word in, on this show. <laughs> now, Jim, I know you're a modern woman, so you're streaming these episodes. Well, I'm an old school girl, so I've been watching them on DVD. So I was able to rewind on my DVD. <laughs> Gnarly. So I did listen to it more than one time because I thought it was hilarious. I did like when uh, Lauren said she doesn't like salmon. The look on <laughs> Jason's hor- face. He's it, horrified. It was cute. I liked that. I it thought was that was cute. adorable. It was kind of the first flash of personality from Jason we've seen in the hills. Agreed. Let's talk about Jason for a minute. Let's let's go back into our 2006 selves before we were old. And like, what do we think about Jason's looks? I don't, I, he never would have been an attractive guy to me. I'll be honest with you. In 2006, I would have been Brent Bolthouse all the way. Out of all the men on the show, I would have been like, Brent Bolthouse is so cute with his big hair and his boredness. And none of the other boys would have been interesting to me. I mean, he doesn't quite have curly hair. No. Because you doesn't. were all about the CHBs. <laughs> curly yeah, haired boys. There were many curly haired boys at that point in life. I mean, not many. There are a few. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I agree. Jason would not have been my type. He's a little too blonde for me, and you know, I don't really like blonde, blonde guys, but he always, I think because of the way he acted, even if he had been, like, really cute, I wouldn't have thought he was as attractive because a lot of times you can meet a guy and be like, oh, he's super cute, and then you get to know his personality, and you don't think he's cute anymore because he's a bad person. And so, obviously, all the history we have in the past with Jason is that he's cheated on multiple girlfriends, and he just seems like he's a bad boyfriend. And he has that terrible beard. It's not like a fun time beard like boys have now, but just an uncomfortable, strange beard on his jawline that just makes me want to look away. But he does look a lot older than a lot of the other guys, don't you think? I do. Like, if you think about Steven from Laguna Beach, I mean, he had kind of a baby face, but Mm -hmm. he was older than Jason, but he looks so much younger. And think about Brian and Jordan and those cats. They they look younger than Jason. Interesting. So, uh, Lauren tells some boring story about going fishing with her dad, and Jason said he's going to get a boat and take her fishing, which I thought was really cute. I was like, oh, It was cute, but she said what? And he was like, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> he was embarrassed. He's like, oh no, I was vulnerable. I better pull that back. Then Jason asked Lauren to a movie, and I thought that was really cute and sweet. I'm like, oh, a movie. Okay, let's talk about my fascination with bad boys in a, the fictional world. Okay. Obviously, The Hills is not a fictional world, but... <gasps> this makes me think of Chuck Bass. <laughs> spoke of at the top of the episode. Yes. I And I found there are many other people who also enjoy bad boys in fiction. In real life, I do not like bad boys. But in my fiction, I just, I always, you know, Dylan McKay from 90210. Yes. Chuck Bass. Yes. Let's yes. see. Who else? Pacey on Dawson's Creek. Uh, heck yeah, Pacey. I don't consider him that bad of a boy, though. Well, compared to Dawson. Pacey over Dawson every time. I mean, we cannot start talking about Dawson because that could take like an hour or two. We're going to be really lots thrilled. of thoughts on Dawson. So let's, we'll save that for our Dawson Leary podcast hater. <laughs> Coming to you in the year 2027 when we're done with this. <laughs> this is not true. We will not do that. Okay, so let's go back. Let's journey back to Bolt House and we have to go back to the bathroom because apparently Heidi loves the Bolt House bathroom. This is where all of the excitement happens at Bolt House with Heidi's meltdowns yes. are in the ladies' room. And so Elodie is in there with with her, and all I could think was how giant Heidi's belt is. <gasps> giant belt alert! That seems to happen a lot. I guess that was Thanks. the fashion in 2006. I can barely remember, but I'm sure it was. And uh, Heidi did one of her special walks when they were going into the bathroom, so if you don't remember it, I encourage everyone to go back and watch that five seconds, because it is hilarious. I'm like, who tries to waggle their butt sexily whilst going into the ladies' room? Nobody I know. Jem, I think you want to make a super cut video of Heidi doing that walk. You love it. I do. I love it a lot. And it has a lot of variations. Um, There's different choreography. So Heidi's like, I don't really get this company. 
happening? I am left out. I'm not a part of it. All these events I don't get to go to unless I am working. I want to work in the nightclubs. That is so much more fun. I quit school for this, et cetera, et cetera. And Elodie is like sitting there like, mm. and she decides to give Heidi some real world advice about paying your dues. But Heidi doesn't want to wait. She wants it all now. And Elodie says, are you thinking of quitting? I love how the whole time Elodie is talking, Heidi's doing that thing that face people make when they don't hear words you're saying and they're just waiting to say what they want to say and what they feel and not absorbing any of the advice you're giving them. That never happens to me ever. As you said that, I was thinking, hello, pot. <laughs> or hello, kettle. <laughs> Wait, would you be the pot or the kettle? I was the pot. I'd be the pot, and you're introducing me to all the kettles like Heidi. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is when Elodie said, are you thinking of quitting? I want to be like, Elodie, she's always thinking of quitting because she always wants to quit everything. When Every the, hour of the day. When the going gets tough, Heidi gets going. To quitting. <laughs> <laughs> so then we go back to Teen Vogue, and this is after lunch, and she's talking to Whitney about the lunch date, and she tells Whitney, me, there's always sparks. So dramatic. And she also shares some Hallmark card wisdom from her dad. It goes a little something like this. Flowers mean I'm sorry and chocolates say I love you. Look, let me tell you something Lauren Conrad 10 years ago. You know what says I love you is when you have time to sleep in and your significant other does not wake you up. That is true love. That is better than chocolate. That is better, almost better than food. I don't know. I'd probably be like right around the same level as food. But but to me, that's true love. When your person lets you sleep, that is the ultimate gift that you can be given. And we don't even have kids and we still think that. They just need to let this saying go. This is a very bad saying. It isn't true. And it's time to put that puppy to bed. So Whitney asks Lauren, could there be something there? And Lauren is very hesitant. And then she said, I think I'll regret it if I don't give it another chance. And then she looks super dramatic. But of course, we already know they're back together. So it's all a lie. It's all a lie. So then we go back to Hillside Villas, and Heidi and Lauren are poolside. Heidi is wearing a boy's boxers over her cutout swimsuit. As one did in 2006. <laughs> Heidi looks surprised when she finds out that Lauren is texting Jason and demands to know, why didn't I know about this? I'm sure she knew nothing about it. Susan, this is a very important scene of the Hills and in the history of the world, because you know what happens in this scene? This is the advent of the sidekick. Thank goodness we're finally to that technology. It's like Lauren has finally risen to the technology levels of one Paris Hilton, who was never without her sidekick that was blinged out, and now Elsie has one she's totally moving up in the world. I loved my sidekick. Lauren is keeping this Jason thing pretty close to the best and Heidi says is he seeing other girls? Just be careful with Jason. I will kill him if he hurts you. Heidi is being such a good friend in this episode. I think unfortunately because I know what happens down the road. I, I'm giving Heidi the side eye pretty much all the time. Um, we have had some feedback from listeners that say that we're being a little bit too harsh on Heidi and I think that we're letting maybe future knowledge color what we're saying about her. But I was pleasantly surprised with Heidi's demeanor in the scene, how she was being very protective and genuine and very worried about Lauren. I did not think it was that genuine. I thought she just was like trying to make a bigger deal out of it than it was. Well, Susan, clearly I'm often fooled by people who are purporting themselves to be great and wonderful and then turn out to not be. It's been known to happen. A time or two. <laughs> For those of you who haven't watched Laguna Beach like I just did... And if you follow us on Instagram at Words on Spoken Podcast, you will have seen the photos I posted of my Laguna Beach DVDs. And no, I did not watch five hours of Laguna Beach in that day because who would ever do that? You would not. You can't sit still for five minutes. Never. I mean, I didn't remember this, and maybe you did from when you watched it, but I was shocked when Heidi actually showed up in Laguna Beach. She was actually at that fashion show, and this is why I will, this is me contradicting you saying of you using your bias from the future seasons on her, because she was creating drama even in Laguna Beach. With the whole Jason's thing, she was egging Lauren on, so. So we head back to Bolt House, and Brent is like, Heidi, I need my lunch. This is what I want for lunch, and get me one of those green drink thingies. I want a whole 
show of Brent Bolthouse boredly ordering his lunches. It's my favorite thing. I love Brent Bolthouse. I love how the editing of this show makes it look like Landon is smirks when Heidi forgets Brent's drink. And that probably wasn't the case. Like, they probably took a smirk from something else. But I just love how it looks like she's like, ha ha, Heidi messed up. So then Heidi goes outside and calls Jordan and says she can barely handle it. And Jordan says to Heidi, who said, I can barely handle it. It's harder for me than for you, though. What? And they never really explain what that yeah, means. Yeah, I, I don't know what that means. So the only thing I can think is that Jordan is actually not listening to Heidi and doesn't know what she said. I don't understand why he would be saying that it was harder. Unless he meant he was sick of listening to her talk about it. Yeah, like, it's harder for me because I'm living through it and you're only having to hear about it. Um, Susan, there's another technology breakthrough in the scene. This is the advent of the razor. I loved my razor, too. I didn't have a sidekick or a razor, and I'm starting to feel like I was deprived somehow. Do you remember how back in those days I would always get whatever the newest phone that came out and you wouldn't care? Like, that was just my thing. You know, I've never been like, oh, I need the newest fashion or been into clothes, but I had to have the newest phone that came out. And, you and we still care. do that. You had an iPhone like three years before. And I, I got a, no, and I got a Blackberry first. Correct. Oh, my little pink Blackberry. Oh, I love the Blackberry. We may be able to talk about that by the time this season is over. I'm sure they graduate yeah. to Blackberries. Yeah, I'm sure we'll get Six into Blackberry seasons. territory soon yeah. enough. Anyway, so then Heidi's like, I'm going to quit. And of course she said that because that's all she has yeah. done so it's far. It's all she knows how to do. I I mean, is she just, like, doing that so she can be the girl who quits all the time and that can be, like, her title on the screen? I would not want that to be my shtick. I know. I'm like, stop quitting everything. As far as I know, Heidi grew up in, like, a super normal family in Colorado. Like, she wasn't really wealthy or anything. And Lauren comes from a really wealthy family. If you've seen her house from Laguna Beach, it's huge. Heidi acts like the spoiled, entitled brat, and Lauren really doesn't. So then we head to the Dome Arclight, their local movie theater. And this is the gnarliest thing that Jason has ever seen. Gnarliest theater ever. (laughs) But we've got another alert, Susan. This is not a technology alert. This is a much more serious alert. The authorities should have been called. Jason should have been kicked off the show for this behavior. (laughs) This is really bad. Are you ready? I'm ready. He is wearing an Ed Hardy t-shirt. Yes, I noticed that. Which was not even okay that the year of our Lord, 2006. Absolutely not. But at this gnarly theater, what else could you wear but Ed Hardy? True. It's the costume for going to a gnarly theater. So the funniest thing I thought about this theater is that there were only two other people in it. And you would think they would have just like closed off a whole movie theater for them to make filming easier. But it was just so funny that there were like two random people in there. Yeah. And Lauren was making jokes about it being such a great movie because it was so crowded. She's pretty funny. She has her moments. Yeah, no, she is really funny. And he's like, you picked the movie? And she's like, no, you did. (laughs) I just want to know what movie they were seeing. Copyright infringement, they couldn't say. And you know what I think about this? Well, it's a really, I think it's a really cute scene. And Jason actually seems a little more comfortable than he does in most scenes. But I also think Jason's hair is gnarly. I don't think, I don't think you're using that in the right context. I was just about to say, what exactly does gnarly mean? I think he uses gnarly as, like, cool and awesome and good, whereas gnarly to me means, like, oh, you just woke up from a hangover and you look like a mess. No, um, in in California, it still means, like, something's really good. Okay, yeah, that's what I figured. So then they head home for the movies, have a cute little drive home. So Jason drops her off at home, and they give a cute little hug, and then Jason goes in for the kiss, and Lauren smiles so sweetly, and he says, let's go to dinner again sometime. And Lauren has this little smirk on her face, but it probably is more like, yeah, because we're already dating. Of course, we're going to dinner. Jason. Very romantic end of the night kiss. I thought that was a cute scene. I actually did too. I loved it. I thought it was cute. And Lauren seemed really, really happy. And I'm like, I'm all about, you know, you be happy. This could be very fleeting for you. So just be happy right now. (laughs) Just do you, Lauren. So sadly, there was no Audrina in this episode. That was, that was, I think the, the, the missing piece for me. I just kept waiting for her to show up and she never did and I just felt lost and alone without her. I was very sad. Does this episode of The Hills pass the Bechdel Bechdel test? test? There are a series of three quick questions that we need to answer to make sure that this episode passed the Bechdel test. The first question is, are there two female characters with names who talk to each other? Ding, ding, ding! 
question for you, Susan. Do these two women talk to one another? Jim, they do. Third question, do they talk to each other about something that does not have to do with a man? Hold, please. Do they? And they don't, do they? Uh, Hold on. Yes, no. They do. Yeah, if we're talking about Elodie and Heidi, yes, they do. Yes. That's about it. Yeah, that's about it. The rest is about boys. But you know what? It's the fourth episode. I think they've done well so far, and so I'm okay with that. Yeah, absolutely. Jim and Susan's funniest moments. Susan, what was the funniest moment of this episode for you? Okay, I love when Heidi kept getting binders because, you know, she got that first batch of binders and then someone else brought the second batch of binders. And it was just so funny. I really enjoyed it. I loved the look on her face and it was just fun. It was almost cartoonish the way they kept piling up. And then I wondered, where are those binders now? Kind of like, where's the Rolodex? You know, somebody entered all that information in a computer somewhere. And I hope those binders were responsibly recycled. But chances are they're gathering dust in the back of Brent's office as well. He's continuously ordering samochas in Maybe Brent built a boring bonfire with them. I was like, everybody... He built a boring bonfire with his binders? My funniest moment was the awkward exchange between Whitney and Jason that you alluded to <laughs> earlier when she was like, when's it going to be my turn for flowers? And he was like, you're next. And she said, oh, next. it'll be my turn next. And they were like, yeah, so... So... Oh. Yeah, super uncomfortable, but kind of cute. But it, it was funny. I definitely laughed at that. Winners of the week. Okay, Jim, the winners of the week. Who do you think was the winner of this week? The winner of this week was the florist because Jason <laughs> and or MTV spent $1 million delivering the tree. I don't know about the second bouquet, but there were two sets of flowers. And uh, this, this LA florist, whoever they might have been, was the clear winner of this episode based on that. Well, I think the winner of the week, brace yourself, was Jason. <gasps> Jason cheated on his girlfriend. Jason cheated on his girlfriend girlfriend on national TV. Jason got back his girlfriend on national TV using quotation marks here because obviously it happened off camera, but whatever. I mean, that's pretty good to talk a girl into getting back with you after doing that to her. Susan, you just described a real winner. That is my winner of the week. Emails, tweets, and Instagrams. Oh my! Jen, I'm excited for our new segment now that we actually have some of our episodes out in the world. So we're getting feedback. This is where we will be discussing the emails and tweets that we're getting. And I'm really excited for this. I loved this email we got from our listener, Grace. She said, so I keep thinking I wanted to watch the show before listening to the podcast so that it would make more sense. But I can't make myself do the Hulu thing yet. So I listened to the first part of the episode one today on the way to work. I have a few notes. One, I was totally planning to wear a low-rise mini skirt with the tank top to work tomorrow with some western wear. So glad I dodged that bullet. <laughs> Two, if you're obsessed with a Chanel jacket over all else, you are not old. You are timeless. You guys were cracking me up. Looking forward to hearing more. Thanks, Grace. We can't wait we to love hear you. what else you think about the podcast. Hopefully, we keep cracking you up. We also got a tweet from at Tiffany Biblio Cinephile, and she said she was looking forward to binge listening to all the episodes we have out, which was really exciting. Uh, we look forward to having you binge them. She said, I'll probably be laughing so loud I wake my sister up while I listen. Now, Jim, since we are sisters, have I ever woken you up from laughing? We used to be roommates, so we lived together. And of course, we lived together for the first like 18 years of your life. You probably did wake me up from laughing many a time. In addition to that, you probably heard me laughing many times in my sleep, which apparently I do, according to all of my roommates. <laughs> Absolutely, you do. So when we were discussing Rolodexes in the previous episode, we got a good tweet about that from Joanna. I feel like there's a hipster out there who uses a Rolodex ironically, whatever that is. Joanna, you should Google Rolodex. <laughs> And you will find out what it is. And thanks to Naomi Marley for um, talking to us on Instagram. We've enjoyed seeing all your Hill stuff that you've been posting. So we appreciate that. And also Christine Barrett. We hope you're enjoying the show too. And thanks for the shout outs on Instagram. Uh, we would love to hear any of your feedback. If you want us to read your emails or your tweets or anything, send them to us. And also I wanted to say a special thank you to our follower who goes by Edgy Fashion Lover. She is a faithful Instagram follower of ours and also 
also is a huge fan on Tumblr, which we appreciate. So thank you, ma'am, for all the support. Lemons and Cream on Instagram told us we were too mean to Brian in the last episode. Well, Lemons and Cream, maybe you need to go back and watch all the Brian scenes again, and you'll come around to our way of thinking, which is the right way of thinking. I mean, Jim, we're always right. 100%. Thanks for listening to Words on Spoken, the Hills podcast. Here's the scoop on all of the many ways you can contact us. We'd love to hear your feedback and ideas for the show. You can email us at wordsunspokenpodcast at gmail.com. You can find us on Twitter at the Hills Podcast and Instagram and Facebook at Words on Spoken Podcast. We are even on Tumblr, which definitely did not exist when the Hills first aired. And you can also visit our website, wordsunspokenpodcast.com. Please subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes. We are also available on Stitcher, Google Play, and SoundCloud. We'll talk to you next Friday. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all. You and all your pretty little friends Up in the hills where the party never ends Your schemes and your dreams when you're whole and you're broken I'm telling you